Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Moose Henderson. I'm a wildlife photographer. And today we're going to be talking about another one of my favorite hot spots, which is Antelope Flats. Antelope Flats, which is located in Grand Teton National Park. And Grand Teton is located in the northwest corner of Wyoming in the United States, just below Yellowstone National Park and John D. Rockefeller. Now, Antelope Flats is very close to the Grovant, which I did in the last video. And I'll link that video up here in the corner. These two sites are actually adjacent to each other. And it's not really clear where one site ends and the next site begins. But they're distinct enough to be separate hotspots. The Grovant is primarily known for its concentration of animals, and Antelope Flats is known not only for the concentration of animals, but also for the landscape locations that are located within this hot spot. Shown on the screen is an excerpt of a National Park Service map, and we can see that Antelope Flats is just to the east of Blacktail Butte and just to the north of the Grovant area and runs up to the north until Antelope Flats Road doglegs to the left and then connects the north-south running Antelope Flats Road with the roughly east-west running Antelope Flats Road and that goes all the way to Highway 89. Just to the north of Antelope Flats is Shadow Mountain Road and the Shadow Mountain area. To the east of Antelope Flats is the National Forest. One of the other roads that runs to the east is known as Ditch Creek Road and Ditch Creek Road is where one of the campuses for Teton Science School is located. As you drive down Antelope Flats Road, you will come across a little creek that bisects the area. This is known as Ditch Creek and it is very easy to identify because it is bordered by cottonwood trees all around. This is the area that's coming up directly in front of us and this is an area where you find a high predominance of moose because of the creek that is here. On many occasions, the moose will be bedded down in this area. It is also an area where you will occasionally find porcupines up in the trees, and occasionally you'll also see foxes down in the riverbed area, and occasionally you'll also see foxes up in the flats. So as you continue to drive, just to the north of Ditch Creek, you can see that Antelope Flats appears pretty much the same as it does on the south side of Ditch Creek. It consists of primarily sagebrush, prairie, and intermixed in amongst this sagebrush is also a plant that's known as bitterbrush. And bitterbrush is the plant that the moose will be eating during the latter part of October into November and the first part of December. They'll stop eating the bitter brush once the snow becomes too deep for them to access it any longer. Another notable thing about the Antelope Flats area is towards the latter part of May, when the snow begins to melt, the Antelope Flats area has a high concentration 
of wildflowers growing in the open flats area and it's a very beautiful area with these yellow sunflower like wildflowers are much smaller than sunflowers but they're very beautiful and it's very common to get down low and photograph these flowers with the Tetons in the background. Okay let's take a break from having the sun shine directly into our eyes and talk about the animals that we can expect to find in the Antelope Flats area. Except for the area of Ditch Creek, the moose in the Antelope Flats area will generally only be visible during the latter half of October, November, and parts of the month of December. Elk will also be visible in the Antelope Flats area during their migration to and from the National Elk Refuge, and this generally occurs during the month of May and also during the month of November to December. Pronghorn are found in the area almost year-round. You can find pronghorn in the Antelope Flats area from roughly the latter part of May all the way until the beginning to the end of October. Pronghorn will generally migrate south to the area south of Pinedale, Wyoming, but on occasion some of the pro pronghorn remain behind and they will generally go into the elk refuge area as the snow depth in the Antelope Flats area will become too great for them to be able to forage. Foxes and coyotes can be found in the Antelope Flats area nearly year-round, as can sage grouse. The prey for foxes and for coyotes is generally the ground squirrels and the chipmunks. The ground squirrels and the chipmunks will both go into hibernation around the beginning of November, the end of October, and the foxes and the coyotes will change their diet to some of the mule deer that are found in the area. It becomes a harder period of time for them to find food, but they seem to do fairly well. In addition to these animals, there is also a few ermine, or what are known as least weasels. I have seen these in the Moore Monroe area, and I have also seen badgers in the Moore Monroe area. The least weasels will generally occupy holes that were formerly occupied by the ground squirrels, and the badgers will dig their own holes. The holes tend to be oval in shape, and they will have some holes that are dug in order to acquire their prey, the ground squirrels, and other holes that are dug in order to be their residences. Bison are frequently found in the area, and you will generally find the bison in the Antelope Flats area anywhere from late November until early December. They generally move back and forth between an area called Elk Flat, which is north of this area, also part of the park, and the Antelope Flats area. That pretty much covers the animals you can expect to see in the Antelope Flats area. But in addition to animals, another thing that makes Antelope Flats really an attractive area is the landscape opportunities. I already mentioned the wildflowers that will be in bloom during the month of May and June and photographing the wildflowers with the Tetons as a backdrop is really a dynamic image. Another very popular landscape type image is what is known as the barns of, of Mormon Row. 
the Mormons had a number of houses and barns along a road that bisects the Antelope Flats area and they were resident in this area during the turn of the 19th century and into the 1950s or so and they farmed this area and built a life here until they turned the property over to the Park Service in the 1950s. The Park Service has maintained some of the structures because of their historical significance. Two of the barns, I am told, are the most photographed barns in the world. One of them is just to the north of Antelope Flats Road and it is known as the John Moulton Barn and the other barn is just to the south of Antelope Flats Road and it is known as the T.A. Moulton Barn or the Thomas Moulton Barn. Hopefully this video has been good and you have enjoyed it. If you would hit the like icon, consider subscribing to our channel. We put out content at least once a week on topics such as tiny houses, animals, wildlife photography, and landscape photography. We will see you again very soon on this channel and thank you so much for joining us.